Hi, my name's Jeffrey. I'm an amateur audio engineer who uses PreSonus Studio One. If you've come to this video, it's probably because you were working along and all of a sudden noticed that your record and monitor buttons have disappeared. This is a really easy fix. What probably happened is you accidentally bumped the A key, which takes you into automation mode, and possibly you haven't set up any automation, so you never came into that before. The solution is simple. Just press the A key again, and there you record and monitor buttons return. Okay, you're done. <laughs> and so this isn't the shortest video of all time. Let me just add a little tip. Now that you know about automation, if you get into this, automation is a super powerful tool. And let me show you one of the little pitfalls I ran into as an amateur playing with Studio One. Okay, so here I've set up some automation on a snare track. And let's say I'm listening to it, and you won't be able to hear this playing. But I decide to add, let's say, 1 dB. All right, that sounds good. Uh, go ahead and stop it. And it immediately goes back to 0 dB. Of course, because that's what the automation is set to do. Now, you could go through and reset all your automation points, and that's what I'll recommend you do at the end. But in the short term, where you're trying to figure out exactly where you want this to come out, you can go over and in your plugins, drop in the mix tool. And what that does is let you change the gain any way you want right here in your plugins, ideally at the end of the chain. Now, there are a couple caveats to this. One is that from now on, once you do that, what the fader shows isn't really what's happening. And the other one is, if you have any pre-fader sends, like down here on the kick, I've got a pre-fader send to a compressor on the bass track, that will be affected by the mix tool. So what I recommend is, go ahead and get this set to whatever you think it needs to be, and when you're done, turn it off, let's go ahead and close it, and then reset all your automation points. So I'll press Control shift a to select all the automation points in that track. And now I'll go ahead and bring this up a dB. I'll press shift to kind of fine tune my moves here. And there we go, I kind of jiggled it around so I think the numbers showed up a little funny, but there you go. Well, I had no sooner posted this video than I got a great suggestion from a viewer named Wilco. And that is to use a VCA strip. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier, but you don't need to remember that. The thing to remember is that a VCA strip is commonly used to control faders on two or more channels, but you can also use it on one. This will all become clearer when we see how it works. Here we've got our snare track. Let's add a VCA strip. Right click on that, go down and click VCA for selected channel. And then the VCA strip is just like a bus or anything else, except all this does is control the amplitude. But you can come down here and change the name or the color, whatever else you want to do. But let's see how this works. Set this up as a split screen so you can see what's going on. And now when I adjust the VCA fader, you can see this sort of ghost line here. I'm bringing it down. You see this ghost line here? That's the offset from where the automation is. So that will adjust the fader level on that channel. Now, the beautiful thing about this is, is that if you have more than one channel that you want to control, that's really what the VCA is set up for. Let's see what that looks like by adding the snare bottom on to the same VCA strip. So we'll select the snare bottom. And now if you go down here to the very bottom of the fader and click this little box, there's our VCA strip. And now you can see that's controlled by the VCA fader as well. I'll move that up and down a little bit. And if we play it, I've got a little funny here. I've got one going up and one going down. But you'll see that the overall levels jump. They go in opposite directions. And this works perfectly. <laughs> it's beautiful. Of course, I do recommend when you're done going back and resetting your automation points. That just keeps everything close together as opposed to having this VCA strip somewhere off to the side. There you go. Now you know what to do in case your record and monitor buttons disappear, as well as a couple tips on how to adjust volume after you've already put in automation. I hope that helps. Again, this is Jeffrey. Until next time.
Happy mixing, my friends.